Hey friends, what's up? It's Janet from Bold Fit and I'm coming to you from the Fitness House in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today I wanted to go over functional movement training. It is a model that I use with my personal training clients and something that is great for anybody who's just starting out with resistance training or even if you've been a practitioner for many, many years. What is functional movement training? Basically, it's just doing the activities that you do in your regular day life and replicating those movements through resistance and also integrating your full body into it. So instead of relying on a machine to kind of be your stabilization point, your body's gonna become that stabilizer. In the integrated fitness model, we wanna make sure that even if we're driving through one major muscle group, that we're still activating the rest of the body to help support it. So I'm gonna go over with you the five main different movements, and I'm gonna include different types of exercises that you can do in those movements and we're gonna make sure that we're focusing on form and technique. That's the most important thing to learn when you're doing any sort of training because you wanna make sure that you have the form before you have the effort. All right, so we're gonna start out with squats. So squats are basically a very foundational movement to any sort of training, resistance or otherwise. And why do we do squats? So as part of the functional training model, Squat is gonna be related to anything that's bending and lifting. So the whole idea is anytime you bend down to get something, you need to bring yourself back up again. Like sitting, you wanna get into sitting into a chair and hopefully get yourself back up without any support for longevity. So while it may look pretty simple and easy, it can be a little bit difficult as far as the technique and form, but once you have it down for the squat, you can pretty much do all the other movements. So for the squat itself, you wanna make sure that you start with your feet about shoulder width apart. And I'm gonna to move to the side so you can see the full body as it goes from standing to the descending position and then back up again. So I'm bringing my feet shoulder width apart and I'm rolling my shoulders back and down. So I wanna maintain a nice neutral spine by keeping my shoulders retracted and my chest open. But before I even begin anything, I wanna make sure that I have my base of support. So I wanna keep a soft bend in my knees. I wanna engage through my glutes and my core as my starting position. Then I'm ready to start the downward movement. So the downward movement is really critical here. You wanna bring your hips and glutes back so you're driving the weight into your heels and your quadriceps are gonna be the main muscle driver in the movement. But you also don't wanna to try to collapse forward with your chest, which is a common error. So starting from a slow motion, I'm sending my hips and glutes back, I'm keeping my chest lifted, and I'm sending the weight into my heels. Once I get to my low point, I'm gonna push through those heels back up and my hips come forward. So a little bit faster, a couple times through, back and up. Down to your low point and back up again. And keeping my chest away, or uplifted. Sometimes I'll watch people when they do it and they'll see a lot of arching in their back. If you arch through your back as you come into that bottom position, you're gonna potentially cause some back pain. So this is what we wanna avoid, and that's why the engagement of the glutes is so important. So with the glutes engaged, either the squeezing at the top or just ensuring that they're nice and flexed as you come down, you're gonna have a nice stable base, and then coming right back up. So a couple different variations with the squat. Practice the standard squat um, with all the tips that we just discussed and the technique and form. There are other variations. There could be a more narrow squat, so your feet would be just a little bit closer in. Same thing though, sending the, hip, the glutes and hips back and then standing way back up again. For a sumo squat, you would actually want to bring your feet a little bit further apart so they're at a wider stance and your toes and knees want to always be in alignment with each other. The sumo, unlike in the traditional squat or narrow squat where you're bringing your hips and glutes back, you actually want to maintain an upright torso here. And as you sink into that position, engage through your glutes to open up your knees. So it'll look more like a ballerina or a sumo wrestler. So you want to come down, keep that chest up, shoulders still rolled back and down. And as I'm coming up from that sumo, I want to think about my heels kind of pushing that floor away as I drive up and my hips are gonna come in together. So again, that's standing nice and tall, I have my base of support, sinking in, opening up through the hips, and coming back to the top. And so once you get that foundation, you can start first making sure that you have the form, 
And then you can start to slowly add in weights and give yourself a little bit more resistance to work with. And as you're doing the squat, you wanna make sure that you start by inhaling as you go down and exhaling as you come up. So our second movement is going to be single leg movement. And typically when we think of a single leg movement, most often we would think of lunging, at least in far, as far as resistance training goes. So if you really think about a single leg movement, all it is is you're shifting your weight onto one leg and then the other. And as we're walking in our activities of daily life, we normally don't even really think that much about that weight shift until we start to perform activities that require one leg to balance more than the other. So that's perfect for lunging. Lunges are gonna start, again, your base of support, you wanna roll those shoulders back and down, maintaining that neutral spine with your chest open. I'm gonna step this way into a forward lunge. And as I do, I wanna make sure that I get a wide enough step and have my balance. So by doing that, I'm engaging through my back, glute, and hamstring, and then this quad is going to absorb all the force in the front. And when I come down into the lunge, I wanna make sure I'm keeping 90 degree angles from my knee to my ankle here, and then back here as well. You don't have to necessarily kiss the ground. If you do, just be careful with your kneecap. So you would come back up and then alternate sides. Again, making sure you keep that balance in the right and the left. And you can also reverse this. So instead of going forward, you come back into that lunge. And that's going to be a little bit more challenging just because you have a blind landing as you step back. But as soon as your foot steps back, they're engaged through that glute and hamstring and then come down into your lunge. So that would be an example of a forward and reverse lunge. There are other types of lunges as well, such as a side to side lunge. So bring your feet a little bit further out and toes and knees just slightly pointed out. This kind of lunge on the side is really like doing a squat over one leg. So again, you're gonna shift your hips and glutes back by keeping your chest up as you do so and making sure you come down to your low point before you break form, wherever that is for you. Then I'm gonna abduct over to the other side and get into my lunging from side to side here. Great for warm-ups. And there's a, a many other variations. Another good one to practice would be a curtsy lunge. Curtsy lunge keeps one foot forward and the other leg is just gonna sweep behind you and then you're gonna come down into that lunge formation here. So now you have lateral movement as well as, well as facing forward sure that you always always want to engage through that back glute to keep that balance and again once you get your form correct on the lunges you can start to add in more weights variation to that and that's going to be single leg movements the third movement in the functional movement training model is going to be any sort of pushing activity so if you think about it in your daily life anytime that you need to push something maybe it's a heavy door maybe you're pushing furniture whatever that may be where is that coming from? So typically when I ask my clients, where's that force coming from? They'll naturally start to say, with their arms, because they're pushing out with their arms. It's not that that's incorrect, it's that you actually wanna be driving from your chest. And that can be difficult for people initially to connect with as far as their body awareness of where their muscles are in their chest. So if you think of a typical pushing movement in exercises, most likely you'll think of a push-up, right? So in the push-up, you you know, it's one of those exercises that a lot of people don't like doing. I know because in my classes I hear it all the time, but it's a great exercise for the full body and really learning how to engage your chest. And the only way to do them and get better is to just do them. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like from a full push-up, and then I'm gonna show you a little bit of some variation and also ch other chest exercises that you can do. And reminder that any sort of pushing movement exercise is going to involve your chest and your triceps versus what we'll get into with pulling, which will be your biceps and back. All right, so when you want to come into a push-up position, you want to make sure that you have your hands spread far enough wide apart so that when you come down to that low point, they're going to be just right outside of your chest. You want to make sure you're externally rotating here and you're elbows are going to track straight back and not out wide. Now I'm going to come into my plank position and so from here my starting point I want to make sure that I'm squeezing my glutes and thighs into the midline. I'm pulling in my belly and my core and engaging tightly through there and then I'm going to come 
forward a little bit and descend. And in the descending position, I want to look just a little bit ahead of my hand so that I'm not looking straight down or cranking my neck. So inhaling down, exhaling, pushing yourself back up. And most important with this whole concept is I want to take my whole body with me. So what I often see with people doing, if they're cheating, they're not able to get all the way through, is they start to lead with their head, they lead with their belly, they're doing push-ups where they're kind of like using their back to come up again, and that's what you want to avoid. So if you're not able to do the push-up straight up from your toes, an easy modification for that would be to do that from your knees. So the kneeling push-up is just going to take a little bit of your body weight off, but you're still going to practice the same form. So my knees are gonna come behind my hips. I'm starting at a little bit of an angle here. And when I come down, I'm staying with the same form. Inhaling, coming down. Exhaling, pushing up. Right back to that start. Making sure that my whole body's coming in one line with me. And now I'm gonna show you how to do some other chest exercises as well as triceps on the bench. All right, so if push-ups aren't your thing, there are other exercises you can do to strengthen your chest so that you are able to do a push-up. And those are gonna be sometimes on the back. Um, and in this case, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do it on a flat bench with dumbbell. We're gonna do a chest press and a chest fly. So if you don't have a bench available, you can always just do this on a flat surface and you don't necessarily need to have any dumbbells. All of these movements can be performed without weights or if you have some objects at home that are equal weight, you can use those as well. So I'm gonna grab my dumbbells, get ready to put myself back flat on the bench, rolling it back, making sure that my back is nice and flat and everything else is supported, and then I'm gonna swing those dumbbells around so my palms are facing out and I'm maintaining a 90 degree angle in my arms. So I'm starting out and down here, and the actual exertion is gonna come as I bring it up, squeezing, pressing into the chest as I bring them over the center, and then back out and down at that angle. And this is important to note because in that arc, you actually are gonna bring it a little bit more forward than when you start out at the bottom. Otherwise, if you go straight up and down, you're getting it more into the shoulders versus the chest. So, inhaling, exhaling on that effort, and back down again to that 90 degrees. Another variety was the chest fly. So with the chest fly, it's, you still stay in the same recline position. Your arms are gonna come out, soft bend into my elbows, and this time I'm gonna squeeze into the center more of like thinking of like a hugging movement, like you're hugging a big beach ball. So squeezing into the center, bringing it again right over my chest and back out. And those are gonna be two exercises that are great for doing um, that month to your chest strengthening. In addition to that, I'm going to show you a couple of more things as well as show you some tricep exercises that are also going to be pushing, pressing muscles. So for another modification for doing the push-up, you can always use an elevated surface. When you elevate the surface, it just makes it a little bit easier by taking more of that body weight off, as well as for anybody that might have issues with placing um, pressure into their wrists, elevation is always helpful for that as well. So for that, I'm going to use the bench once again, still following the same form in my push-up as I would on the floor, bringing myself into a nice straight line, engaging my glutes and thighs into the center, making sure that my shoulders externally rotated and my hands are about as far apart as my chest will be when I come down. I'm going to descend in the same fashion, inhaling as you go down and exhaling as you push up. So let's say you can't get all the way down. Maybe this is your low point, and then you, uh, if you went any lower, you'd start to break form. So let this be your low point and move up from there. And eventually, as you gain strength, you'll be able to go more and more into that full range. All right, next pressing and pushing muscle is the tricep. So same muscle group, a little bit smaller of a muscle, but also pushing, pressing. And so for example, for triceps, you can do things with weights, like an overhead tricep extension. So in this case, the extension will come behind my head. I'm holding the dumbbell by the one bell, making sure that the bottom of it is not gonna bang into my head. When I descend, I wanna keep my elbows nice and close into the side. This bell is gonna go right about to the base of my neck, and this is where that pushing part comes in. So the work effort is actually bringing it straight back up. So inhaling as I go down, elbows in, then engaging through my triceps to press it back up. 
Another one for this one is tricep dips. So tricep dips, finding another elevated surface. It can be a chair, a couch, anything that's nice and stable. And you're gonna bring your hands really close into here as you come into a, a dip formation. So again, most important with the triceps is to make sure that you're tracking your elbows straight back so they're not coming out wide. And here I'm gonna maintain my core, everything glutes, everything in one line as I come down to my low point in the tricep dip and then pushing just using my triceps to get back up. A common mistake that you will see here is people will come down to that low point and then thrust their hips up, which is actually taking away the full point of the movement. If you have trouble from this position with your legs all the way out, you can always bring your legs a little bit closer in and that'll make it just a little bit easier to get into that dip. So you have a couple of varieties there. Uh, not, lastly, with Lighter dumbbells, you can also practice some tricep kickbacks or press backs. In this case, you would be standing, coming into a hinge position, so my hips and glutes are back, where my back is nice and flat as I bow forward. I'm gonna bring in kickbacks, the dumbbells right up underneath my shoulders, keeping those elbows into the side again, and straight pressing it back into that full extension and back right underneath my shoulders. Common mistake I'll see on this one is that people will get tired and they don't extend all the way out and down. So this will start to become their tricep kickback. That's not a kickback. You wanna make sure you can get it all the way up and extend it out and back down. Use lighter weights or body weight if you're having trouble getting into that full extension. Press backs are gonna be the same thing except the arms are gonna stay nice and straight as you bring it back and either you can bring them all the way down and back to like that full tricep extension or hold them here and just pulse. And this is gonna be a little isometric movement where you're just isolating that tricep muscle and burning it out to fatigue. And that's gonna be your push-ups and your triceps, chest, pushing movements. All right, so we're now at movement number four and that's going to be pulling movements. So pulling muscles in your body are gonna be related to your biceps, which are at the front of the arm, and your back. And the back is a big muscle group. So there's actually quite a few different exercises to get for your upper back, shoulders, mid back, and lower back. So I'm gonna show you a few of these of what you can do with some dumbbells, and then we're gonna do a lat pull down to show you some back exercises. One key point here is, remember those bending and lifting exercises like the squats? So a lot of people when they do the squats, let's say they're bending down to pick up a laundry basket. They think that the motion to bring it up should come through the arms and the back. And that is gonna cause injury or chronic pain in the lower back. Really all, anything you're doing from picking something up from the ground is gonna be a bend and lift using your legs. So arms and back are not used in those type of movements. All right, so I'm gonna start with some bent over rows. So I'm gonna grab my two dumbbells again, and again, this can all be done body weight. You're gonna pick your dumbbells up or just holding yourself flexed. Again, bringing my feet about hip width apart, and I'm going to hinge my movement here. So by hinging, I'm gonna have a soft bend to my knees, my shoulders roll back and down, just like I did with all the other positions, my chest open, my hips and glutes are coming back, my back is nice and flat with a natural curve in the spine. The dumbbells are gonna hang just below my shoulders. And now I wanna think about my scapular area in my back, your shoulder blades squeezing together and contracting to raise up the dumbbells. And when I'm back here, I wanna make sure I give a little extra squeeze before I descend back down. So contracting and then releasing. So exhaling here, inhaling as you go down. So that's gonna be with two arm movement on the, on the bent over rows. You can also do a single arm row and you can use your body to be the stabilizer rather than a flat surface like a bench. In this case, we're gonna do a lunge. So I'm gonna step forward into a forward lunge. I'm gonna make sure that I have my balance steady, having the glute and the hamstring engage in the back leg. My knees still lining up with my ankle. And I'm just gonna put my other hand here as a little bit of a balance to steady myself, but without applying too much pressure into my knee. But again, I'm starting a little bit in that hinge position. Shoulder is gonna be right in line with that dumbbell, and I'm thinking about that contraction in my right scapular region and back down. And that's how you can do 
a single arm unilateral movement with the rows. Also, biceps. So biceps, usually a favorite amongst people because they want to have nice big biceps to show off. So the movement itself is pretty simple. You're just going to be contracting through your bicep to lift up the weights. But what happens is people oftentimes throw a little bit more into it to get more leverage and they're not actually using their bicep to do that curling movement. So you're going to bring your weights. One variation is to bring them out, palms facing out. Make sure you have your base of support and you want to be sure that when you're standing in this place that you're going to be contracting only through the bicep to lift it up to your shoulders, full range of motion and back down. And also, I'm not locking my elbows into my body for any support. They're just out here enough so it's just the arms doing the movement. So bring it up, exhaling, inhaling on the way down. So you can always practice with a full range of motion. You can do half curls, coming up halfway and back down, starting halfway and back up. A lot of different varieties. You can also switch your grip. Hammer curls are gonna be with a neutral grip with your palms facing in. Same thing though. You're gonna bring it up just like you did. Try not to tap your shoulders and bring it right back down. So it's a fluid movement and it's not stopping. That way you can keep the muscles under tension the whole time on the eccentric contraction on the, and making sure that you contract and on the eccentric lengthening. All right, so those are a couple exercises to do with dumbbells and I'm gonna show you one to do with a cable or if you have a lateral pull down bar. So we're gonna go into the lat pull down right now. So for those who are unable to do a pull up, which would be another great example of doing a pulling exercise, a lat pull down is gonna be the same thing except in the opposite direction. So in your, when you're doing a lat pull down, you wanna find either a cable um, or some other system where you're gonna be able to pull a bar from up here down right to just about your chest below your chin into, in order to engage your latimus dorsi, which are kind of like the wings of your back. So this whole area back here is what's gonna be the primary mover. So I'm gonna start, I wanna make sure that whatever I'm pulling down, I'm actually sitting nice and upright, shoulders again, back and down. You don't want your shoulders to come up to your ears. And here, I wanna also be sure that even before I give the, begin the movement, I'm gonna start already contracting through my lats. So I'm engaging my depressing and squeezing my shoulder blades together. And then I'm gonna take it all the way just to about my chin height or, or just right back ahead of your chest and back up again. And what I'm feeling is the contraction here instead of here. A little bit of the biceps, of course, will be engaged, part of the pulling down and up. But mo most of the people will often find that they're doing this primarily through their arms. So one big red flag is if you start to feel that pulling movement in your forearms, you are not recruiting your back and up for this position. So always, always try to make sure just by the start, bringing your arms up, keep the shoulders back, down and back, scapular retraction, pr pressing my shoulder blades together, and then also engaging through here. So mind-body connection in that muscle group is gonna help you to have a very effective lat pull down. And that's gonna be your pulling movements. And finally, we come to the fifth movement, which is gonna be rotational movements. So talking about rotational movements, let's talk about different planes of movement. So we're used to moving forward and backwards and side to side sagittal plane, frontal, anterior. But we're not used to so much thinking about moving rotationally in the transverse plane. And what's really happening in this point is you're kind of separating your upper body from your lower body. So while your lower body is staying nice and stable, you're twisting, engaging your obliques and transverse abdominis to move yourself over while keeping your hips aligned. So just starting from a very, very simple standing torso twist. I'm just holding a bender ball here just to have something to hold on to to kind of keep me accountable with my shoulders rolled back and down. So I'm gonna hold it here and give it a little bit of a squeeze to engage my chest. And then I'm gonna, again, make sure I have my base of support, knees are softly bent, glutes engaged, core engaged. From here, I'm gonna to rotate to one side by engaging through my obliques and keeping my hips straight. 
and then coming right back into the middle and doing the same thing on the other side. So notice how my hips are not moving and I'm making sure everything's nice and tight there so that all I can focus on is getting on that side angle movement. If you wanted to use something like a ball like this, you could also add a little bit more leverage by extending it full out and the same thing still. And if your uh, range of motion on this one is not as far back as I'm kind of coming in this position, even if it's just a little bit this way and a little bit that way, start with that. You don't have to necessarily try to get into that full range of motion. Start with little steps and progress from there. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple more of these exercises that you can do on the floor. All right, so I'm gonna show you now a few exercises that you can do from the ground to engage the core for those rotational movements. So one very common one is called the Russian twist. For the Russian twist, you're gonna sit with your knees coming up, your feet out in front of you, and you're gonna bring yourself back, shoulders again, roll back and down, chest stays open. So I'm kind of like holding back here onto my tailbone. Now, for the Russian twist itself, you can do this in a lot of different ways. Easily starting with just kind of keeping your hands in close to your chest, and again, rotating and crunching with that side oblique back into the center and out to the other side. As you come into the center, you wanna inhale, exhale out. So if you get really good at this and you're making sure that your form stays intact, you can also start to lift your feet off of the floor to give yourself a little bit more resistance um, and additional challenge. But if your form is starting to go from just this sitting position here, stick with your feet on the ground. Another modification you could do for that is having something like a little small ball that you use for like Pilates or yoga. I'm using a bender ball in this case and I can bring that behind my back and just kind of have it right in the small of my back as I lean back into it. So now I have something that gives me just a little bit of support and I can get a little bit more into that side rotation. You can again also use this to be out in front and adding in a little bit of leverage like we did when we were standing. But all of this has got to require right form and technique. Remember, form over effort. So, casting my ball aside, I'm going to show you bicycles. So this is another common movement done for your abs that's a rotational movement. So it's going to bring up, first getting a light touch on the back of my neck with my fingers. I don't want to pull my neck. I'm just having them here just as a little bit of support and my elbows are coming out. So I'm going to try to get my elbow to the opposite knee, engaging through my obliques. So what, they're gonna both come in, back out into the center, and over to the other side. And this one again, on that out, inhale into the center. Common mistakes that I find on the bicycles. You will see people doing a lot of this. First their elbows are in, they're kind of holding their neck here, and they're sort of like moving their arms and legs back and forth. That is not a bicycle. You want to get those elbows out. You want to try as much as you can to connect that elbow to opposite knee through your obliques. So you should feel it in this whole area here. All right? And if it's hard for you to do, just start with a small rotation. Limit that range of motion. That's going to be a good modification until you're able to get fully into that twist. All right, friends, so that is covering functional movement training and showing you some exercises and form and technique for each movement within those frames, bending and lifting, single leg movement, pushing, pulling, and rotational. I wanna thank you guys for watching. I want you to see if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more because then we're gonna take some of these movements we learned just from that single motion and start to add in more compound motion. So please stay tuned. Peace out, my friends.